Stay with me, little bitch. Yeah, you know that I'm your man. You be careful like a snitch. No thoughts, no stand. Two holes, ten toes. New guac, all the bands. New lick, new chips, new kicks. Check your chat as you play. Bad bitch, no bad. I just hit another lick and she be counting in my rest. And I be feeling hella rich. No brine, I'm just sad. But I'm making another hit. Got bitch in my life. Stay with me, little bitch. Yeah, you know that I'm your man. You be careful like a snitch. No thoughts, no stand. Two holes, ten toes. All right, all right, all right. Hi hey everyone, what's going on? What's good? We'll be starting soon. Just need one quick moment to set everything up. But we should be good to go in a few minutes, if not seconds. No thoughts, won't stand Two holes, ten toes New guac, kind of bands New wig, new chips, new kicks Jackie Chan, yeah, she bad Bad bitch, throw back I just hit another lick And she be counting on my rest And I be feeling hella rich No Brian, honey, stab About to make another hit God, bitch, on my life Stay with me, little bitch Yeah, you know that I'm your man You be capping like a snitch No thoughts, won't stand Two holes, ten toes New guac, kind of bands New wig, new chips, new kicks Jackie Chan, yeah, she bad Bad bitch, throw back I just hit another lick and she be counting on my rest And I be feeling hella rich, no Brian I'm just sad about to make another hit God, bitch, in my life Alright, so 
Let's quickly change scenes. Hey! Alright, so we can start the editing now. I've already started selecting some shots which I want to edit today, but those are not all. There are more to come. Um, and I think I will continue my selection right now. So that's done. Just need to go on my hard drive quickly, and I have to look past my microphone here. <laughs> Let's put some more chill tracks on. I think that's nice. Yeah. That's for a good editing vibe, I think. Alright, um, let me quickly go into the folder where I have my shots. I hope the selection was stored in Lightroom. I think it should be. I'm not too sure though. Uh, no, it didn't store. Yeah, that sucks a bit. It shouldn't be too much of a problem though, because I think I can remember where I left off. Should be right around... Drifting scenes. Around here, I think. Yeah, somewhere around here. So let's just continue here. I'm not going to pick any of those shots because I used uh, 70 mil later, or 24 to 70, and I was able to zoom in a bit. So I will be looking for those shots right now, the closer ones. But I think there aren't much which look good because problem was I, I, I tried to not shoot on eye level because typically you try to avoid shooting on eye level when shooting cars because eye level is like the regular way you see cars every day like 24 7 and that's why usually you try to shift the point of view a bit and try to go for either higher or lower angles and I tried to go for lower angles here but the problem is there was this like barrier right here which obviously makes sense on drift event like <laughs> don't need to talk about that but that fucked some of my shots i think like here it's really distracting and honestly i can't be fucked editing this out in photoshop like <laughs> there's no way you're gonna see me replacing all of this with tarmac like no way especially because of the smoke right here there's no way man that's a pretty nice car. I think it's an S14. Please don't kill me if I'm wrong. But I think it should be a Sylvia S14 right here. By the way, guys, um, I'm reading my chat all the time. So if you want to chat about anything, photography, cars, no matter what, just write in the chat box and we can talk to each other. Yeah, this car was sick. That BMW had like 600 horsepower, they said, with a V8. And the smoke was incredible. I don't know what sort of tire he had on but this guy completely smoked the entire track no one else managed to do that like not with so much smoke i think this could be a cool shot right here i want to have as much smoke as possible in the shot man i wish i was this guy here holy shit he must have gotten some really dope shots unfortunately i didn't get a press pass so couldn't do that But I'm thinking about applying for press pass more and more. Because it's not that expensive and it can help you to get in certain spots like this guy right here. Which would have been like really sick to be. Okay, let's go over those shots pretty quick because the cars are repeating now. Oh, here you can see I've switched to the 24 to 70 right here. So the cars which are a bit further away are now appearing bigger because I was able to zoom all the way into 70 mil. Shot on F4, by the way, not on F28, because if you have fast moving subjects like the cars here, for example, you want to go for an F-stop that's not completely opened up so your autofocus has more chances of hitting the focus. Because if you were to shoot this with 2.8, it might still be possible, 
But if you were shooting with, let's say, a 105 with f1.4, your autofocus would have a really hard time and it would miss a lot of times, no matter how good your camera is. Plus, shooting cars is always a thing where you, or not always, but in most circumstances, you don't want to open up the aperture like all the way. Because if you do that, you will have spots that are in focus and spots that are out of focus and that looks terrible in a lot of cases. Especially if you go in for a three-quarter shot. Then you have the front of the car in focus and the back is out of focus, so yeah. Don't be, don't be afraid to shoot with a bit more closed up aperture like f4 or sometimes even f8. Depends on the situation, of course. But don't be afraid of using like um, more closed apertures. Okay, so right now I'm looking for shots where I can see a lot of smoke because this looks a bit boring. The car could be standing right now. It wasn't standing, trust me. But it could be standing because there's no smoke, you can't see any motion. Um, that's why I want to go for a shot where you can see a lot of smoke coming out of the rear tires. Something like this, for example. Yeah, this looks good, doesn't it? Let's go for this one. I think that looks pretty good, pretty nice. That's a nice shot as well. You can see the entire view is fucked up because of all the smoke. <laughs> I think I might be going for this one right here. Yeah, that's the one. Just as a quick disclaimer, the stream might be ending pretty abruptly because I will um, stop editing as soon as my girlfriend arrives. Because um, we will be not on a date night, but like we'll go go eat dinner tonight together so yeah this AR right here like <laughs> I mean this, this this was shot on the on the tuning event the tuning world Bodensee which is still going on I oh, know they closed half an hour ago they closed at 18 o'clock at 6 p.m. so they are closed now um, there was like you have to imagine there was this big expo and there's a lot of a lot of halls where cars are exposed I think it was like 12 halls or something. It was huge and then there were like one or two halls I think where VIPs could park and I think the VIPs were the people who had their cars on display there so the cars here are just daily drivers and That's a daily right here <laughs> like what the fuck? Also, I have no idea how that's legal in Germany because that's so low. Like, low in terms of road legal cars here, but like, alright. All of the cars here are like, are just daily drivers. Man, you know me, I just had to shot the GTI. There's one thing you need to have, or you need to train in order to shoot on expos. It's your patience. Because there's always people running around, which is totally fine, because they are just like you, visiting the expo. But sometimes you have to sit there and wait like for 10-15 minutes until you get a shot when no one is in the background. <laughs> and that can be really exhausting. That pillar really pisses me off right here. Especially in shots like this. Now, if you have a situation like this and you really want no one in the background, there's a trick you can apply, but you have to use a tripod for this. You can set up a tripod, um, and, like have your focus on manual so it doesn't shift between shots. Focus on the car, shoot, wait for a few seconds or minutes even until all of the people in the background have moved, then do another shot, then wait again till the people have moved and make another shot. And just repeat that like four or five times. The more you do it, the more safe you are, let's put it that way. But usually everything up three times is alright. And then you can layer your shots in Photoshop 
and go through each layer and mask out the people. And if you are lucky, and if there's not a whole crowd of people where there are still gaps between people, you are able to recover the background without any people in it. That's something you can do, but let's be honest, I don't want to be standing at one car for like half an hour with the tripod at an expo where there's hundreds of cars. You don't have the time, typically. Of course, except if you're there for like multiple days, then yeah, sure. Just a little thing I wanted to tell you in case you didn't know it already. Also, I really like that shot. I really like this one. Because the car is matching like the color up there. And also the bokeh is perfect. The car is still in focus right here. Could have closed down the aperture, maybe one stop more. Should be alright. Let's continue the selection. And I realized that I really need to buy a polarizer for my 35mm, because I don't have a polarizer for the 35 because it uses a 67mm filter thread and I only have 77mm polarizers. That was a problem, because as you can see, cars are giant mirrors, as I always say. And especially in situations like... Like this one, you can see the harsh sunlight really screwing your picture. Or like here, there's so many reflections on the car. Of course, there are people who like this, but personally speaking, for me, I don't like it too much. And I would have loved to cut out the, some of the reflections here with a polarizer, but yeah. I've ordered one, should be arriving next week. R35 Nismo. Iconic car. Have to edit those shots, of course. Let's go for this one. I already shot this car at the Essen Motor Show, because it was there as well. Shot some bangers of it. I don't know what I should be thinking about that, that rear wing. I don't like it too much, honestly. It's just, it's too high, I think. I would have preferred a ducktail here, or maybe even no spoiler at all, like the, the, the stock spoiler is this one right here. And I think that would have been enough, but yeah. It's of course up to, up to the owners how they want their car to be looking. Supra as peeking out right here, the Mark IV Supra. Oh, nice shot, bro. Man, it really took some bangers. Okay. Either you love it or you hate it. I still think it looks odd. I still think it looks odd. The front of the M4. It's weird. And also let's take a quick second to appreciate how big that fucking air intake is and the turbo. That's like as big as my head. Maybe even bigger. Yeah, let's edit this one. I think I'll be going for higher up shot. But in the higher up one you see more people. So let's yeah, let's maybe go for the lower one. Let's go for this one. If this dude wasn't there... But hey, as said, it's an expo. Everyone can walk around like they want. So, totally, totally fine. Pick this one as well. And that one. I was further away here and I like it. But there's people in the background. I mean, <laughs> he looks pretty hilarious. Like the way he looks over to the car is like, oh damn, nice ride, bro. But I think I prefer this one. Plus it's a bit more underexposed. Let's pick this one as well for the Beamer boys on Instagram. Yeah, I don't like this one too much because of the background. It's just boring. Nice car, but I don't like the shot. There's just something about the framing I don't like. Yeah, let's try Let's try to edit it. Maybe the crop will make it look way different. Let's 
Going for this one because the lighting on the ass of the car looks pretty good in this one. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. More ass. Also looking for the one where the light looks best. Looking for this part right here, especially now. I either want to take one of those or one of those. Let's take this. The way I'm editing car photos, if I have a lot of shots from an expo, for example, is I just go through the shots and if there's something that sticks out, something that I think, oh damn, I have to stop here, then I know it's a shot I want to edit. So I'm not going through my shots like this. I'm going through them pretty quick and if there's something that jumps out to me, it might be a good edit later on. I think that shot would have been better if I would have taken it from a higher point of view. Never mind. It is what it is. Yeah, let's pick this one because I know the owner and I want to send him some shots of it. Oh, it's my girlfriend. <laughs> Bagged Ferrari, why not? Alright, that's it. Photos are picked. Damn, I see in my... I have the stream open on my phone so I can check. And I look fucking ridiculous when picking photos. Holy shit. Okay. So, let's go through all of my recent shots. Hopefully not leaking anything, but... Should be fine. Yeah, should be fine. Just some more car photos right here. Okay. Um, the expo starts here. Okay. Let's start the editing. Also, my Lightroom has been reset to German. Let me quickly change that. If I can see where to change it. Settings. Fire. Language. That is English. Alright. Let's quickly restart Lightroom. So you guys can understand what I'm doing. Oh, Lightroom, come on. Lightroom. Thanks. Okay, here we go. Now it's in English. Perfect. All right, let's load. Uh, let's wait until the preview has loaded because that's not in focus. Have I picked this? 
Yeah, that's better. That's not in focus. Okay, let's edit it anyways. Okay, so... Can we bring some of the highlights back? Nah, not too much. Let's try adjusting the exposure just a bit. Throw in a little S-curve with a bit of fade. Yeah, a bit of fade though. Bring the shadows down a bit more. Highlights up. Contrast is enough, I think. Clarity up or down? Maybe down a bit. Negative five on clarity. Then we can jump into the colors. Do I want to kill the blues like I do it always? Yeah, fuck the blues. Fuck this one as well. It's called Aqua in English. All right, let's bring the green over to yellow. Yellow a bit more to the orange side of things. We can saturate that a bit more. Kill magentas, bring them over to the red. Same for purple, uh, pink I mean. Then we can boost the shadows just a bit. Get rid of the highlights a bit more. We can crop in. Let's go for a 16 by 9 crop right here. Just like this. Straighten it up a bit. Radial mask. Over the car, so we can bring the focus a bit more on the car. Hit O on the keyboard to get rid of the selection view. Boost exposure just a bit. And boost the shadows, also increase contrast a bit. Let's bring this down a bit because the car is really exposed on top, but not on the bottom part. Boost the shadows maybe a bit more, a bit more exposure, a bit more contrast. Another radial gradient right here. Inverted one though. Expand it a bit more so it's not interfering with my car. And decrease the exposure so we get a nice vignette going on. Just like this, maybe not so much. Then we can go down on the highlights a bit more, reduce the whites because it's really exposed or really bright, right, light, really bright up here in the windows. Go up with the exposure just a tiny bit. I think that's it for this shot already. Let's move on to the next one. Maybe we can copy over our settings to this one. Control Alt V. Yeah, it's not perfect. We have to do some adjustments. 4 by 5 crop this time. But that's not a good shot to be honest. Decrease exposure, adjust the masks. To be like this. Uh, it has to be way smaller. Ah, uh, not that small. this linear gradient going up from here exposure down clarity up just a bit I think that's okay next shot here we can try to use one of my v2 presets This one works pretty good, I'd say. Let's maybe increase the exposure a bit. Decrease contrast a bit and also reduce clarity. Reset it to zero. Shadows up, highlights down. Bit more contrast, bit more exposure. I think that's all right. Let's give it a four by five crop. Let's 
this. Next one. I like this preset, but it really doesn't work on those shots, I feel like. I mean, it could work, but it's not perfect. But we can use it as a base. Up the exposure, increase highlight, uh, shadows, I mean... Ah, no, nah, come on, let's, let's edit it from scratch. Increase the exposure a bit, decrease highlights. Not going for an S-curve this time, I want to go for a more faded look this as I always do fuck the blues fuck magenta fuck purple green any greens here yes we have some green can fuck off as well I can make it yellow that should be fine yellow a bit more to the orange side increase saturation orange can be increased a bit more as well any reds in the shot no then they can fuck off 4 by 5 crop, cropping it a bit here, so there's not so much negative space on the right side. Radial filter or radial gradient over the car, like this. Increase exposure and increase the shadows, that's the important step here. Also increase contrast, every time you, have, you increase Exposure and or shadows you also have to increase the contrast just something to keep in mind Then you want to bring in another linear gradient right here so we can make the ground a bit darker So let's bring the exposure down. Let's increase the clarity exposure more down a bit like yeah That's looking good. We can boost the shadows a bit more on the lower part of the car Because you can't see details there. So let's do it like this maybe and boost the shadows here yeah I think it's good increase exposure overall and then we added in a little vignette again radial gradient over the car invert Make sure it's not interfering with the car too much. I said invert, thanks. Increase its size accordingly. Like this. And lower the exposure. That's good. Next shot. Maybe we can copy the edit. Copy and paste. Yeah, it works, it works. A bit more of a wider crop here. Have to adjust the masks, of course. That's the vignette. Has to be tilted a bit. That's something we don't need for this shot. Here you can see that the car is losing quite some exposure in the back, so we bring this over to the car. Focus it on the back though, not on the front. And the linear gradient has to be adjusted as well. Now the rim is looking a bit desaturated. It's already desaturated right here, but... I want to increase the saturation on the rim a bit, because otherwise it just looks a bit odd. Radial gradient over the rim. O on the keyboard and increase saturation. If you're trying to increase the saturation of something that's orange, like that rim for example, if it doesn't help to increase the exposure, uh, the saturation, you can also try to adjust the white balance a bit more to go to the more warm side and you can see that this is changing the rim quite a lot but that's way too much obviously so let's just do it this way also make it a bit bigger I 
I think that's looking good. Move it on to the next one. Is this straight? Yeah, I think that's straight. Okay, next one. Apply our edit again. Not looking too bad. 4x5 crop, obviously. Make it straight. Center it up. That's straight. Uh, I think it's not straight. Yeah, that feels good. Just our masks. This can be removed. That's our vignette. It's to be tilted, obviously. This, like that, like that, like this. So. It's good. Um. What the fuck? I just hit some random keys and now my entire screen was black. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. Oh, it still does it. Oh, that's the blackout mode of Lightroom. Oh shit, how do you toggle this again? Uh, I can't remember. Oh fuck, I can't remember. Um... That's not how I want things to be. Shit, how do you do this again? Shift M? No, it wasn't Shift M. Oh boy, I can't remember how to change that. Fuck, I think I have to Google that quickly. <sighs> I can't find anything. Ah, shit. This is how I want it to, to be looking like. That's, that's correct. And once I click in the Lightroom, things get dark. How do we do this again? Oh man! Yeah, I don't want to be proofing. That's not what I wanted to be doing. Oh no, escape doesn't work. <laughs> oh fuck. Okay, I completely fucked my Lightroom. Uh, uh, Man, I'm a pro. Okay, let's restart Lightroom quickly. I think something's fucked. Everything's working again. That's how I want it to be. Okay, perfect.
using one of my presets on this one. to increase or like make the shadows on the car a bit brighter. I'm so fucking hungry but I have nothing to eat in my house and I'm so hungry. <laughs> you have no idea. Okay, that helps. That helps. That's good increase the situation overall and do a vignette again. Like this. And in addition, a, radi uh, a linear filter, I mean, linear gradient from the top. This decreasing the saturation as well. I think that's the edit right here. Let's touch. Might go for the same preset. Let's go for the same preset here, it was this one. Increase vibrancy again. Straighten the shot up. Like this. Still not straight. Like that. Limzer, hello. Hey man, what's going on? What's good? Hope you're doing all right, having a great day. Some exposure, shadows up just a bit. I think it has to be primarily in the front. Uh, no, not really. I think we have to increase the exposure. Therefore, Making the ground a bit darker. Like this, decrease exposure, increase clarity. Ah, not so much. I'll make it a bit softer. I think that's okay. It's not a perfect edit, but I think it's okay. The photo itself wasn't perfect as well though, so yeah. The yellow is missing right here. I have to bring the yellows back in. Yeah, that's way better. Yep, doing good. What event is this? Uh, it's a Tuning World Bodensee event. On the Bodensee in Germany. It's over now. It was from... Thursday, I think? Till today. So those photos are... Fresh shot two days ago oh damn that's my favorite preset honestly that's i mean i haven't released my v2 pack yet the v1 pack is out in my shop but i'm not promoting it anymore because the, i never use my v1 presets anymore but the v2 presets um those one uh, this one it's not in the v2 pack but it will be i just i just love it that's 100 percent my style right here What happens if we use the grade from the other shots? Yeah, it's it's almost the same. It's a bit more saturated, and way more contrasty. But I like this. I like this. I might even decrease the contrast just a bit. It looks so good. Thanks, man. Makes me happy to hear. It's 
bring the crop up a bit. Uh, maybe not so much. Let's try to align the wheel with our lower third right here. That's looking good. Maybe crop in a bit more here to get rid of the negative space on the right side. Now I think if we throw in a little radial filter right here on the ground. Now watch this, watch this. Like this. So it selects the ground. And if we now increase clarity, we get a lot more reflections in the ground. You see that? By increasing clarity. But then we have to make it a bit darker so the attention of the viewer doesn't go to the ground but to the car. And then we have to adjust our other masks as well. Make it horizontal. And make it smaller. Bit more exposure. Cool little tip. Yeah man. It's definitely nice. I use it in a lot of my sh in, a, in a lot of shots I use this. Especially uh, on tarmac you can use this or on reflective surfaces like this stone surface. I don't know what it is, but yeah. Some type of marble or something, I don't know. Okay, maybe the vignette not so drastic. And then I want to make the front part of the car a bit brighter. Because we're losing a lot of details right here, so let's increase exposure, but primarily the shadows. Bring those back up again. A bit more to the left. And always increase contrast when boosting shadows or exposure, as I always say. And then we can increase the overall exposure just a bit more. Decrease highlights just a bit. And throw in a linear filter from here to lead the viewer's attention a bit more to the car. Or maybe even a bit brighter. And I think that's that's the edit right here. Yeah, I think it's it's alright. Compared to the raw. <laughs> okay, next shot. We might use the same preset here. Okay. It definitely works, but I don't like the color part up here, but we can work on this. So go for four by five crop again. Get rid of the negative space on the right. Decrease contrast just a bit. Increase the shadows. And I think we can get rid of purple and pink entirely because that's not in the car. Then we have this left, but this can be fixed really easy. I mean, we, we can leave it in though. It's not looking too bad. Yeah, I know, fuck it, let's get rid of it. What a difference, looks so good. Thanks man, that's sad. It really feels amazing if other people tell you that your photos look good. Like, honestly, it means a lot to me. So we just do it like this. Quick and dirty. It works. We can increase the vibrancy, I think, just a bit. And bring the crop up just a few pixels. Looks good. Do we have any radial filters? Yes, of course we do. Here we need a pretty big one for the vignette. I think that looks good. And then we have the other filter which increases the brightness and boosts the shadows. Oh no, it doesn't boost the shadows. That was a lie, but it should boost shadows. Let's make this smaller, because as you can see, the car is really exposed up here, but pretty dark down there. So let's bring the the exposure increasing mask down here. A bit more exposure, maybe. Not too much. You don't have to bring all the dark parts up again, because a car needs contrast in order to look good, obviously. But I think that's alright. 
What do you shoot with? Um, I can show you what this was shot with. All the photos you see here, except for some of the drift shots we see later on, were shot on my R5. Let me quickly bring up OBS so I can see what I'm actually showing. Right, okay. So this was shot on my Canon R5. I even have this right here, which doesn't work. Okay, shit. <laughs> I have the Canon R5, uh, it's currently equipped with a 35mm f1.4 from Sigma and all of the shots you see here, as said, except for some of the drift shots, were shot using the 35 It's a, yeah, it's a nice lens, especially for its price, you can pick it up used for 600 bucks, which is a lot of money, obviously, as always in photography. But for a lens that capable, it's definitely worth a shot. And uh, yeah, mine is dirty and filthy as fuck because... <laughs> It fell in the mud one day, and I didn't manage to clean it entirely yet. <laughs> but, the glass is clean, that's what matters. So yeah, R5. Alright, so, back to the edit. There's one thing I want to adjust before closing this edit, and that's right over here. You can see that the... The roof is, is, is really bright, and the car is really bright, and you can't see the line of the car here that well. So I will try to make the roof just a bit darker by bringing in a linear gradient. Like this, oh, there already is one. Oh no, that was the desaturation, okay. Yeah. Like this, decrease the exposure. Oh, that makes a huge difference. We have to be careful to not overdo it because then we lose a lot of contrast in the shot. That's it. Bit more exposure. And here we go. There's the before and after. Next edit done. Moving on. I think we go for, for the same preset. Yeah. As said, I love this preset I made. It's just, it's amazing. And you can see this being used in a lot of shots on my Instagram feed. Maybe we can crop in just a bit more. Like this. Yep, needs to be straight though. Then, of course the car is way too dark, um, let's see, are there any filters? Yes, there are. Let's make this one smaller, so it's only affecting the car. Uh, let's bring it down here again, because the car is really bright up here already on the roof, so we have to bring it down to the exhaust area. Oh, boost the exposure quite a bit actually and increase the shadows and as always also increase contrast to not make things look flat. Then we need another radial filter which I will apply soon. I first want to adjust the Yeti right here. Okay. Let's bring in another linear gradient. Throw it over the entire car. And increase the exposure just a bit. Boost the shadows, and as always, increase contrast, you know what it is. Okay. Then let's bring in a linear filter, which goes down from the top to the car. Get rid of some of the exposure. Another linear gradient from the bottom, and as you can probably already imagine, we increase the clarity here. <laughs> Look what a difference that is. Like, I know I might be annoying telling you over and over again to use clarity, but you can see what it does. Increase clarity a bit, decrease exposure as we always do. Uh, now this is looking really dark, so we have to get rid of some of the contrast and increase the exposure just a bit. 
can also increase the vibrance just a bit. Oh yeah, that's looking good. We can also reduce some of the saturation on top here. So the banners up here aren't too distracting. Because if you look at this now, the banners are really distracting. And if we get rid of this a bit, it makes a big difference. Um, we can now try to make the roof of the car a bit darker because it's really bright. That's why I said earlier, I really should have used a polarizer if I had one for the 35, which I unfortunately don't have. Uh, but that's too much, that's way too much. Also, not making that much of a difference though. Oh, a bit brighter. I think that's okay. Is it straight? No, I don't think so. I think now it's straight, isn't it? Now that was a bit too much. To go back a bit. Got a question. Is it better shoot wider than you want so you can crop it in? Um, always depends. When shooting cars, I would never recommend you to shoot the car in a way that it's really filling your entire frame. If the car fills your frame border to border, that's not a good thing in 99% of, of situations. Because when you start to, to tilt your photo in editing to make it 100% straight, or if you want to crop it a bit, you always lose parts of the car. So I would always recommend you to leave some space around the car. Um, just a few pixels is enough. Like. I wouldn't go below this, for example. I think that's that's good, and I wouldn't go lower than that. Yeah, and always one thing to remember: don't forget to shoot um, landscape shots. Because nowadays, because of Instagram and stuff, we always, or at least that's how I feel, we always shoot portrait because you want to post it on social media and shit. But you totally forget about shooting landscapes. So that's another thing to keep in mind when it comes to framing. So to make it short, to answer your question, um, yeah, leave a bit of space. And depending on the resolution of your camera, if you have a 20 megapixel camera, you shouldn't have too much space because when you crop in, stuff gets pixelated. And if you have a camera that has a bigger resolution, like 45 megapixels or even 60, like the new Sony's, which is just incredible to be honest, but then you can have a bit more space around the car and crop it in later. So yeah, if you leave a bit of space, you give yourself more, more different ways to edit it in post. Oh damn, I know, I know, I say it a thousand times when editing photos, but... <sighs> hey, <laughs> okay, I promise I will shut up. I will shut up regarding this preset, but... Yeah, I feel like that's a one and done thing I've I've created, and it's just looking amazing. Okay, we have to adjust our filters again. I just use a Canon Rebel T7. I mean, it's Canon, so it's a good camera, obviously, my man. <laughs> as long as we're not shooting Nikon. <laughs> nah, just kidding. Um, the photographer makes the photo and not the camera. But yeah, I've never used the T7, but I've used something that I think is quite close to a T7. And it's the first camera I've ever used. And that's this one right here. <laughs> that's the first camera I've ever used and it's my 1200D. It's already so old and it has gone through so much. But yeah, that's the camera I started with. As long as you're shooting raw, I would say that pretty much every camera can produce great photos. 
Of course, it makes a difference if you have a super big resolution or a super small resolution. Sure, it, it, it makes a difference, yes. But at the end of the day, you can get great shots with a cheaper camera, without a doubt. Twelve hundred is like the T seven. Yeah, they, they they are similar. I didn't like I never properly understood how Canon does the labeling with the rebels. Because as far as I understand the rebels are the same as like the twelve hundred, the thirteen hundred and so on, but they are named differently in different countries or something, I'm not too sure. But I know that they are quite similar in fact, yes. I've gone through a lot of Canon cameras now. I've used the 1200D, then I used the 5D Mark II, then I had a 1DX Mark II, and uh, now I'm using the R5. And I had a 6D Mark II, if I forgot this. I had a 6D Mark II, before of that I had a 1DX Mark II, and now I've got the R5. So yeah, I've tried out a lot of different cameras by now. I think it's just for America. Yeah, that's what I think as well. It's it's a bit weird with Canon. So many shots to edit. Okay, it's not it's not that many. It's it's all right. I'm really excited for the drift shots here because I think those might turn out really nice. But we are not there yet. We are here. I hope to see you stream more often. Love your work, man. Appreciate it. I really appreciate it, man. Thanks a thousand times. If I got you right, you're from America. Um, it's really amazing because you are literally from the other side of the globe. <laughs> and you are here enjoying my stuff and it's... It's really nice, it means a lot to me, man. Appreciate it. Thing is, I don't stream too much because when I'm streaming, I'm editing slower because I'm explaining, and don't get me wrong, I, I love explaining stuff, but in most of the situations, I need to get my edits done as quick as possible in order to be efficient, and then I can't stream. But, yeah. Yes, I am. All right, my assumption was correct. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this looks pretty good as it is, but I don't like the color of the car. If you compare it to this one, you can see that the color of the car is being lost a bit. So I think we need to fix that, yeah. We can try to do it. Oh, let's, let's first adjust the masks because they are orientated the wrong way. make shit a bit smaller bring to the front again because as always the roof is well exposed but the front isn't also just a vignette just make it a bit bigger very understandable yeah hope so But um, just as a little plug, I also have a YouTube channel, so if you want to see more, um, feel free to go on YouTube. <laughs> I'm also planning to do an editing tutorial on YouTube where I show all of the, the tricks I use on a daily basis. But yeah, I've tried to do it two times already, but I never was happy with the result. Okay, so how can you make selective masks in the new version of Lightroom? I know a lot of people can't relate, but I hate the new version of Lightroom. 
this filter window here, it's ass. It's it's literally ass. Period. I want to make this radio filter selective. How can I do that? Color range. Okay. That looks good. I want to have this color. But now it selects everything and not just my radial mask. That's so, like... <sighs> I swear to god I'm going back to the older version. As soon as the stream is over, I'm going back to the older version. I I don't get it. I really don't get it. I want this to be selective in the range of the radial filter, not on the entire photo. So I've been having a problem with either my camera or SD somehow when I got to import photos my computer can't read the files. Oh that's super weird. You're shooting raw right? And the T7 shoots CR2 I think? Right? Should be CR2. I mean one thing you can try is if you can take a look at the pictures on your camera so if you take some shots and go back in your camera and you can review the photos then your files shouldn't be corrupted. I'm shooting raw CR2. Yeah, that's also the obvious way to go here. Yeah, I, I would try to, to review the photos on the camera and if the camera can read the files, they aren't corrupted. Then it has to be something related to your computer or to Lightroom, I don't know. But that's a way to, to check where the problem is coming from. Okay, so since I can't do a properly a proper range mask, I just increase the saturation on the entire thing like this. Like, yeah, get fucked. That's not the way I would do it usually, but yeah, fuck Lightroom. Like I just lost all of my photos from cars and coffee yesterday morning. Oh no, man. That sucks. That really sucks, bro. I can relate. I once had an SD card failing on me entirely. It was completely corrupted. No shots at all. That was back when I used the 60 Mark II. You only have one SD slot like you also have in the T7. And when that SD card is corrupted, you're fucked. You're just straight up fucked. And I feel way more safe now because the R5 has uh, two slots for a CFast and an SD. And that makes me feel way safer. Especially when doing paid work. Because if you do paid work and you come home and all of your photos are lost, things are <laughs> even a bit worse. But it's relatable. It's absolutely relatable. You come home, you think you have some really great shots and then you can't edit because your photos are lost. That sucks, man. But as I said, have you tried reviewing the photos on your camera? Have you tried it already? That's what I'm worried about. I do paid work, so it's kind of pain. Oh shit, bro. Yeah, then I would be worried as well. I think I would carry a laptop with me and back up the photos like every hour or something. I would be so afraid to lose everything. Because shit like that can really ruin your reputation. I don't know what you're shooting, but especially if you're shooting things that can't be repeated, like weddings, for example. If you lose those shots, man, you can jump out of a window. <laughs> like, Nope, it wants me to reformat. Oh shit, bro. Cars. Okay, yeah, the thing with cars is if you have a client, you can tell them, hey, look, the photos got lost, let's shoot again, it's on me, you don't have to pay anything. But if you're shooting a car meetup, then yeah, sure, like cars and coffee, well, yeah, then you're fucked as well, <laughs> of course. Okay, yeah, may maybe it's just a SD card, maybe you can just buy a new SD card. Those aren't expensive, fortunately. I'm using the Samsung Ultras. Those one right here, the golden ones. Uh, send oh, it's not Samsung, it's SanDisk Extreme, I'm sorry. Yeah, I like those little fuckers. They are like 20 euros, so it should be around $20 as well. 
and they work fine. I never had one failing on me, not even once. Let's hope it stays that way. <laughs> Okay, the red is looking pretty orange here. Why is that? What's happening to the oranges? Yeah, let's make orange a bit red. I don't want to crop on this because I think that could be a sick phone wallpaper. Yeah, I'm not going to do a 4x5 crop here. That might be a nice wallpaper. Yeah. I'm gonna leave it as it is. I'm hoping so. Yeah, man, I'm hoping so as well. Okay, but here we go for 4x5 crop. crop in way more. That's the reason I bought the R5 in favor of the R6, so that I can crop in without losing too much pixels. Like, of course I'm losing the same amount of pixel, but I have more left, obviously, because the R5 has a 45 megapixel sensor, which isn't really nice to have. But as said, you can take good photos with a cheaper camera as well, no question. Oh shit, stay here. That's a bit too much contrast. Also, we have to recover the red color again by bringing the oranges to the red. Maybe we can try to fuck the blues. Oh, they already are completely disappeared. Like this. Okay, the ground is a bit too bright for me. So, linear gradient up from the bottom like so. Decrease exposure, increase clarity. Decrease exposure even more, even more, even more. Make it a bit softer. Then we have to make the car brighter again. Especially in the lower parts, as always. Shadows up, exposure up, contrast up as well. Highlights just a bit down, maybe. A bit less contrast again, more exposure. I think that's good. May I ask where from, uh, where exactly you are from? Well, not exactly, but like which state? Because I'm really looking forward to going to the USA one day, but it's pretty expensive. Like the flight alone is like 2K and the accommodation isn't cheap as well. So that's something I'm, I'm really wanting to do, but it might take a few days <laughs> to, to fulfill that dream. I think we can copy the edit from this to that. Just the masks again.
that's not looking good. We can try this one. It's not looking too good either. But I don't like that shot, now I'm editing it. I think we can scrap this. Okay, um, can you hear me? Okay, great. My interface, my audio interface just died. That happens from time to time. Then I have to restart it. I have to restart Spotify as well. Let's continue the editing. I think the white balance is a bit off here. Let's try to adjust that. Oh no, oh no, that's worse. Ah, oh, oh, that's good. A bit warmer maybe, like just a bit. Yeah, that's good. A bit more vibrance. Start Spotify again. Perfect. Here we are going again. Okay, I think I won't be cropping this as well. Because it might be good phone wallpaper. Make the front car brighter. Yet he has to be way bigger. Oh, no worries, man. No worries. I wish you best of luck fixing your problem.
Could be a bit brighter. I think I will be fixing the rest with masks. And I'm not sure if I'm going to crop this to 4x5 or not because that's looking good as it is. Might also be another sick wallpaper. Yeah, I think I will leave it. 3x2 is the default. Oh, I think camera sensors are 3x2, right? No, I'm not too sure. Bringing back some details. Like this. And adjusting the vignette once again. Just making it a bit wider. And then I want another radial gradient over the entire car, just to bring a bit more attention to the car. Increase exposure, decrease highlights maybe, because of the really bright reflections on the boot. Yeah. Increase shadows, exposure just a bit more, a bit of contrast, or maybe even a bit more exposure. That's good. And then I want to increase the global exposure as well. I have to bring the highlights down, I think, and the whites just a bit. A bit more contrast. That's okay, I think. So are the similar SDs better than the larger ones? Are the smaller SDs better than the larger ones? Um, no, they aren't. I don't know why you're asking. Because of the 250 euro drive we just saw. I don't know, drive, but SD. Point is, I like 128 gigs. You can, like, of course you can get a 256 or 512 gig. But the problem is, once you get bigger SD cards, you start to hoard data on them. And you don't think about backing them up. And you just collect photos and photos and photos. And you have thousands of photos on your SD card. And you're not backing them up because there's still space on my SD card. And then your SD card dies and you are fucked. So that's why I personally wouldn't go above 128 gigs on an SD. Of course, things change if you are doing video as well, because then you run out of memory pretty quickly. But for photography, I think 128 is the sweet spot. It's enough for a whole day of shooting, maybe even two or three, um, but it's not too much. So yeah, that's what I would be going for. Oh bro, Nightbot deleted your messages? Oh man. I don't know why. You used caps? You didn't. You didn't use caps. Okay, that's weird. Yeah, but it's, it's not a problem. I found them. They're just mixed in the middle of everything. Okay, that's weird. That's weird, but hey, good good that you found them. <laughs> I used all caps because I was happy. <laughs> okay, man. <laughs> you shall be forgiven. <laughs> I'd be happy as well. Man, I would love to, to see some of your photos because we're talking about photography all the time and I would love to see some of your shots. Do you have Instagram or something you can quickly share here? I would love to take a look into your work as well. Oh. Uh, okay, maybe we can fix this. Uh, but what to the cool side and bring back blue, get rid of the contrast a bit, increase exposure, yeah, that works. I recently just made my photography, but I can link it if you'd like. Yeah, sure man, just send me something where I can see some shots of you. I'm just interested. 
It's not important if you are pro or beginner or amateur or whatever. Oh, bro. Nightbot just fucked you again. Okay, uh, wait a second. Wait a second. I will adjust Nightbot. That sucks. Give me a second. That's not how it should be. And I'm, of course, reverting your timeout. Oh, bro, I can see your message. <laughs> I found them in caps. <laughs> okay, um, give me a second. your timeout in Nightbot. That's a good question. Okay, let me first disable the link protection. So now you can post links. And I also... Okay, but I found your message in the logs. That's at least one way. Jeremy Tyler Lewis, all right, man. Hey, those shots are really nice, bro. Hey, already see the Volkswagen. <laughs> Oh, you sent me a DM. Okay, man. I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. Just to unban. Yeah, I tried. I tried. But it didn't take it. Oh, okay. Okay. I was a bit stupid. Okay. Now it's reverted. You can chat again, bro. Sorry for the inconvenience. We back. Yeah. <laughs> we back indeed. Hey, man, but your shots are great, honestly. Really cool. Are German cars a common thing in the States? Like I see it. three Volkswagens, that might also be one, I'm not sure. Is that a common thing? Because as far as I know from like videos and photos, you have a lot of Japanese cars over there, like the Supras and the 350Zs or 370Z. Yeah, you have a lot of, a lot of Volkswagens over there. Okay. I'm surprised. Porsche and VW are very common. Yeah, bro, but Porsche? Superior. Like, <laughs> if there's one brand I'd love to work with in the future, it would be Porsche. Like, without a doubt. Without a doubt. And Volkswagen, I have, let's say, special relation to them because I own two, two Golfs, a Golf 6 and a Golf 2. And I'm using the Golf 2 for rally purposes. We're driving rallies with the Golf 2 and I just love those cars. But I think I have to as a German. <laughs> Speaking of Supras, Okay, here we can do the little clarity trick again. Clarity up, exposure down. Uh, maybe that's 
so much you know, like this. I know it's not drone, but I got to shoot a Lotus Evora GT yesterday. Holy shit. Okay, that's a nice car, man. It's a pretty rare car as well. I would even go as far as to say that I've never seen one here. Not even on car meets. Like Lotus, they are really rare in Germany. I don't know how it is in the States, but you probably never see a Lotus over here. Maybe like Elise or something. But not an Evora. It's really nice, bro. Something is fucked about this image. I don't know what it is, but something's wrong. It's... Maybe it's a bit too much color? That's one thing, and it's too much contrast, I feel like. Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it. A bit more contrast again, a bit more exposure. That's it, yeah, that's good. I think the car is so saturated. Yeah, I think so as well. Uh, maybe we can just decrease the orange and red a bit. Yeah, red can just sit at zero saturation and orange maybe as well. Uh, orange maybe a bit less and red just a bit less. Let's go with negative five. That's a ride. And I think the ground is a bit too dark makes things look way too heavy. That's it. That's good. On to the next one. By the way, uh, I'll have to end the stream in about 15 minutes because my girlfriend is arriving soon and we are going to eat dinner. Lotus are rare also here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know why, but Lotus just isn't a brand that you instantly think of. If someone asks you for a sick car, you wouldn't be saying, like, a Lotus. Like, of course they're making good cars, but, like, everyone would think about, especially non-car people would think about, oh yeah, a Ferrari, a Lamborghini Gallardo and shit. But no one would say, hey, a Lotus. Like, not even a car guy, probably. Except for situations where he's, like, a Lotus fan, of course. But even I wouldn't say like, oh yeah, Lotus. It's a bit of an underdog brand, I feel like. But I always find it really interesting to see what brands are present in which countries. Because there's one thing that pisses me off about Germany. Sure, we have the Autobahn, like highways without speed limits and stuff, and that's great fun, no question. And for that reason, I love living in Germany. <laughs> but we don't have Japanese cars here. Like, literally. You will never see a proper Japanese JDM classic, like a 370Z, uh, R34, a Supra Mic 4. You won't see those cars here. There's just, there's just no way. Sometimes, like, really small, uh, like, in, in really rare occasions you see um, Miatas, that's the only thing you see here. And then they are really fucked. They are in bad condition, all of them. And the only way you can see Japanese cars around here is on car meets. Like, as you can see right here. But that's something that pisses me off. Five Supra Mark IV? Yeah, bro, as I already mentioned, the expo was across 12 halls. As large as this one, like here, 12 of them. Hundreds of cars. Two Supras. Two Supra Mark IVs. I'm not kidding you. I, I don't know why. Japanese cars never really have been a thing in Germany, I feel like. And you can't, you, you, you can't buy them here. If you find uh, a used Japanese car, they are... They are in, in a really bad condition. They are super expensive, and the other thing is, you don't get spare parts. If something breaks, you are fucked. You have to buy the parts directly from Japan, and then they are super expensive, and they take really long to arrive. For example, a mate of mine owns, uh, is it a Honda or a Nissan? I think a Honda ZRX. 
he had a Honda, a Honda ZRX, and he had to get new brake pads, which is like, it's nothing special, you, you, your brakes wear off after time, like, yeah, common thing. He had to wait one and a half months for the brakes to arrive, and it cost him 500 bucks for two brake pads. I'm not fucking kidding you. And that, it, it sucks, it really sucks. Twelve? Yeah, twelve. <laughs> only two. Yeah, really, only two. Um, like, okay, Skyline R35, you see quite a, quite a, yeah, quite some of them here. But, well, the 35 is not that special. It's an expensive car, but you can get it from the factory without any problem. But, like, older GTRs, like R34, 33, 32, no way. No way. On the entire expo, there was one GTR. One. There were some GTSTs and stuff. Great cars, of course, like the R34 GTST, amazing car. But only one GTR. That's not an R35. Uh, that's yeah. I don't know. I'm a big JDM fan. Um, yeah, it sucks. Personally, I don't like R35. Yeah, it's it's a bit tricky. Too boxy. I like boxy cars though, but the, yeah, I can I can relate what I mean. I feel like the the later versions of the classic Japanese cars just have nothing to do with the older cars, and you can't really compare them. Like compare a Supra Mark IV to a Mark V, you can't. In my opinion, you can't. It's two different cars, like two different worlds. Same with Skyline. The R32 compared to the R33 and R34, it's pretty similar. Like. Of course, small changes here and there, but then there comes the R35 and everything's different. And I think that's a trend with Japanese cars nowadays, that the newer generations just completely change. 400Zs may also, yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Like, if I, if I could choose a Japanese car, it would be... Ah, uh, I don't know. Yeah, wait, wait. Let me check. It would be... It would be, it would be... Oh yeah, oh yeah. It would be this. Okay, that's a shot from a video game, obviously. <laughs> Fuck. But hey. 240SX? Bro. Take my money. <laughs> and shut the fuck up. But as said, you, you don't find those cars here. And if you find them, they are in bad condition and they cost a fuck ton of money. It's a sad reality. That's the one thing that I don't like about living in Germany as a car guy. Of course, we have a lot of great cars. We have Porsches, a lot of Porsches. We have Audis, like the RS6 and everything. Great cars. But JDM? Not really. So if you see a Supra Mark IV here, it really is like, Damn, is that a Supra? <laughs> like, that's a real thing over here. But hey, you can always complain, I guess. There's always some downsides and upsides as well, so, yeah. Plus we have great cars, great local cars. I'm not a huge fan of BMW, except for the old ones, like the E24 and the M1. But those are great cars also, of course, if you like the newer ones. So yeah, can't complain.
Bro, you know what? I'm gonna follow you. Jeremy. I wanna see how you're doing. I wanna see your future shots. I'm really interested, man. Okay, just followed you. Keen to see how things are going for you, man. I don't know how it is over in the States, or like in Florida, but over here, photography is, especially car photography, is a really competitive thing, and no one wants to help each other. People are like, if, if you would ask a car photographer for locations, you'd be like, oh yeah, go fuck yourself. I'm not gonna tell you my locations. And it sucks, it really sucks for beginners. I don't know how it is in the States, but yeah, I really wanna see what you're doing, man. Okay, maybe a bit more of a crop on the right side. Ah, not so much. Like this. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Bit more vibrancy. Perfect. Ah, I don't like that shot. Now that I'm reviewing it. It's not so great. Yeah, I'm scrapping this one. See you later. Oh, I'm not too sure about this one. Nah. Nah, 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 nah. Sometimes you try to edit a shot and then you realize it's not that good. But hey, just how it is. I can't complain, I got a lot of photos out of the event, so it's not like I have to use every shot, so I, so I, have, so I have some in my collection. It's also the reason I stopped posting like rows on Instagram. A few years ago, I always posted three shots of one car on Instagram or like three I don't know three posts so you have one car per row but that really limits you because you just you would technically need three bangers to post three photos next to each other but sometimes you just don't have three bangers and that's a that's a normal thing like it's nothing to be ashamed of sometimes you just have one or two photos where you say that's a real banger but if you start to 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 post those rows on instagram you have to post shots that aren't as perfect as you'd want them to be just one thing that i that i realized that i want to i want to tell you guys in general as well because once you start doing photography for social media you really start changing your style and you start to adapt to what the majority of people likes and what the Instagram algorithm or the whatever algorithm of the platform you're using appreciates. And that can really fuck your photography. Just one thing to keep in mind to just do what you want and to maintain the style you like and not go with the flow. Something I've learned just recently. But it's really important in my opinion. Because we all chase those followers, those likes, and the best looking Instagram feed and shit. And you start to lose focus about what, what's important, which is taking good photos. Give me a second. No, not that important. Okay. Oh, fuck. Fuck, fuck, fuck. No. Okay, back at it. 
My girlfriend will arrive at any minute. Oh, okay, now it will take her another 10 to 15 minutes, I think. But nevertheless, I want to say goodbye to you already. I will still be streaming and editing, but once she's here, I have to, I have to leave because we have, um, we've booked a table in the restaurant, so we have to leave quickly. So I already want to say uh, goodbye right here, so that I don't forget it later. And I want to thank you for for the great stream, some nice chats, everyone. As I've already said, you can follow me on YouTube and Instagram as well if you want. We can connect there. You can also write me on Instagram, no problem. DMs are open. Always available for a quick chat. <laughs> oh man, white balance can change a lot. <laughs> Holy shit. It shouldn't be too surprising. Okay, here we can definitely apply the clarity hack on the on the ground right here because it's tarmac. It works really good. Oh, it should work really good there. First, we have to adjust our masks like this. Just have to be careful to not overdo it with clarity because it can look scuffed pretty quick. Oh, by the way, I'm not talking so much because my throat hurts from, from talking. Because I always forget to drink. And then my throat hurts like crazy after a while. Plus I've been yelling a lot yesterday because, as I already said, we, we drunk. You know how it is. A lot of people, a lot of alcohol. You start to, to get loud whenever you talk. this orange reflection on the car. I don't know if you can see that, but around here there's an orange reflection and it looks really odd. Okay, what if I just... Okay, no, that's not a good idea because it also affects the taillights. 
Okay, I am back. Sorry, I was looking through photos. <laughs> no worries, man, no worries. No need to apologize. I'm just some random dude from the internet. I gave you a follow also. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. As already said, you can always hit me up in my DMs if you ever want to chat about photography or something or cars or anything. Always up for a quick chat. Because we were talking about Skylines earlier, as you can see, R35 GTR, we have those around. But no, no GTR older than R35, Supra Mark 5, yeah, no problem, but only two Mark 4s. Yeah, that shot's not looking good. The framing isn't great. Nah. Oh, I think the white balance is fucked on this one. That might be the reason. Let's try to adjust the white balance a bit. Oh. That changes a lot. I think that's how it's supposed to be. Okay, on to the drift shots. You know what, I'm added one from scratch, so you can see how I edit photos without using my presets. I feel like that would be interesting to you. More interesting than just using presets. Okay, so let's crop in quite a lot. Fortunately, I have enough megapixels on the R5 to do so. Okay, do like this. Very interesting. <laughs> okay, so we do a crop. Then I haven't shoot a drift event yet. Oh, you have to, you have to, it's great fun. Okay, um, first thing I would usually do is to get rid of all blues. As you can see in my Instagram feed, I'm not a big fan of blue. The problem is that I'm also deleting some colors from the car right here. But I don't think it's a problem. Uh, the car looks pretty good still, even without the blues. So I'm not giving too much of a fuck right here. I'm increasing the exposure. When it comes to the tone curve, I'll just do a little I don't know how to say it, a little bump in the curve. Also make the shadows a bit darker. A little bit of fade, just a little bit. Maybe a bit more contrasty here even. Increased exposure again. Then I want to make the greens yellow and yellow orange. Not too much. Can decrease green a bit. Also, I don't want any purples or pinks in my shot. And if there are any remaining, I want to have them red. I hate blues also. Yeah, man, I, I don't hate blue, but it's just Yeah, it's just not it's just not my style. I have some blue shots in my feet, but I, I don't like them. I prefer the let's let's call them non-blue shots. Oh, I have some blue shots in my feet. Wait a second. I can show you an example. This, for example. I like the photo. But it's just... It's just not me. This is me. When it comes to colors. Yeah. I guess it just comes down to your individual style. I have a black car, I hate blues. <laughs> okay, bro, tone curve. Um, quick crash course. Uh, tone curve is actually pretty easy. 
The tone curve can be used to bring some contrast into your shot. You have the contrast slider over here, which increases or decreases contrast. Simple as that. What is contrast? Um, maybe I should explain that first. Contrast is basically defining the difference between your bright parts and the dark parts of your photo. So if you bring up the contrast slider, the bright parts in your photo get brighter and the dark parts get darker, as you can see. If you bring the contrast down, it looks washed out. And if you bring contrast in, there's a big difference between dark and bright, as you can see. Now the tone curve can do the same thing. If you want to bring contrast in your shot with the tone curve, you can just do like this. Make a point in the middle, do an S curve. As you can see, the effect is the same. On the left side, you have your shadows and on the right side, you have your highlights. So if we bring up the shadows, you will see the photo gets brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter, and brighter until it's white. And if you bring down the highlights, your photo gets darker and darker and darker and darker and darker until it's black. The waves in the background show you where different parts of your photo are, so to say. So you can see here is, there's quite a lot of dark. There's nothing that's black because it would be here, but there's a lot of gray. That's the tarmac. And you have some spikes in the highlights. That's the car. So if you want to introduce contrast, you can either use the contrast slider which just does it globally, or you can use the tone curve to make slight adjustments. Here you can really say, okay, I want this area to be brighter, but the rest should still be dark. Of course, this looks shit now, but you can see what it does. So yeah, I usually go in and make a little ditch here, this, and then increase contrast here. That's the look I go for, typically. Just a short crash course in Tone Curve. And color grading, it's not that hard actually. Like, Of course you have those color grading wheels here. I don't like to use them. I use them almost never. Um, but those are pretty easy to use as well. You have your, your mid-tones, your shadows and your highlights. Your shadows are the dark parts, your highlights are the bright parts, and your midtones are the middle parts. So you can translate it to the tone curve. Shadows, midtones, highlights. If, for example, we want our shadows, like the dark parts of the photo, to be blue, that would change our tarmac here. We can do it in the shadows, make them blue. And you can see the dark parts get blue. If you want to make the bright parts, the sky and the car, for example, orange, you will bring this to orange and you can see that it affects the bright parts like the car and the sky but not the dark parts like the tarmac that's how color grading works explained roughly uh, that's how people do it i had no idea <laughs> glad to help man as said i'm planning to do an in-depth tutorial on those on those things on my YouTube channel. Okay, back to back to business. Uh, let's make it a bit brighter. Then let's increase the vibrancy because we deleted a lot of colors. I've removed all of the blues. I've removed magenta. I've removed purple. I want to bring back some of the colors that are remaining, like increase them. There's also a difference between uh, vibrance and saturation. Oh shit! My girlfriend just texted me that she's here, so I have to leave. Um, just one sentence before I leave. Vibrancy and saturation. If you increase vibrancy, you increase the color or you make colors more vibrant in areas where they aren't vibrant, if that makes sense to you. If you increase saturation, it increases the color everywhere. In saturated areas as well as in not saturated areas. If you increase vibrant, you only increase the colors that are already saturated. That's the difference. So I would always go for vibrance rather than for saturation. Of course you can do both, but saturation you have to be really careful because the photo starts to look fucked pretty quick, but the vibrance doesn't. 
So you can see with vibrance, it changes the red parts right here and the color of the car because that's already pretty vibrant. If you do saturation, it always increases, uh, it, it also increases the saturation on parts that aren't as saturated, just as atomic right here. You can see it's not looking too good. So I would always recommend that you go with vibrance in favor of saturation. Okay, um, I'm afraid I have to end the stream right here because otherwise my girlfriend is going to rip me apart. <laughs> um, as said, thanks for the for the great stream, everyone. Hope to see you soon again. And as said, you can chat to me on Instagram, um, check out my YouTube, no worries. I also have Twitter. Just do whatever you want and hit me up there, and we can we can get in touch. So yeah, that's it for today. Have a great day, everyone. Hopefully see us soon.